What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today you join me for another one of the collection videos. So if this is your first time tuning in, it's basically me going through my collection one by one, telling my story and well, that's it. So for those of you that are new, this is Vintage Kicks Gallery. We're gonna get started with a 2019 pair of Jordan 4 breads and I customize these a little bit. So you guys probably noticed that this is cream color now. And I went ahead and outlined the edges with a little bit of gray because what they messed up on the 2019 release, although they did get the Nike Air right, uh, they didn't do the Durabuck, which is basically the material that these were made out of and the previous releases were made out of. Um, Durabuck, the edges are raw, so they look white kind of grayish and these were just pure black they just didn't look right because when you lose that that um the outline of the materials you lose the actual shape of the shoe in my opinion so it's a modification that takes maybe 10 15 minutes to do maybe maybe 20 really really helps though and uh you can do it in a number of ways you can do it with paint like i did uh you can do it with a um uh pencil you can do it with a number of different things but i went one step further and i actually did the midsole and cream too so these really have a vintage og look take a look tell me what you think not bad right Moving right along, we have a pair of 2008 Nike Vandal Supreme OGs. So these are pretty crazy, I'm not gonna lie to you. They don't get a whole lot of wear anymore, but there was a time that they, well, I had two pairs of them, we'll put it that way. Um, I really like these. I don't have an OG pair anymore from 1985. I did and I sold them. And since I sold them, the prices have kind of gone through the roof on the OG pairs. I do really, really like the Vandals, especially the 85s, 84s. Um, they really, really, they wear good still. And this material here has a little bit of reflectivity to it. So it doesn't weather as good as say the blue pair I have or the black pair or anything like that, the Terminators that is. Uh, but still, I just love the way that they look and believe me, they get some attention when you wear them. Um, this is a 2008 pair, like I said. I'm not really sure what they sell for these days, but it's not a lot. I think Vandals are kind of slept on. They've got really cool retro vibes. Like I said, they're from 1984, 1985, the OGs are at least. And Nike did a decent job on the 2008s here. Uh, my midsole starting to patina here, which is nice. Uh, this has two different colors, really. I don't know if you guys can tell that, but it really makes this accent, the, the shape come out. I don't think Vandals are really, you know, popular by any means or any stretch of the imagination, which means you can still find deals here and there. Generally not in this colorway anymore, but there was a time you could pick up OGs for like 100 bucks, 150. Those days are long, long gone, but please come back. All right, next up, we have a pair of 2018 Jordan 1 Shadows. And guys, I really, really like these as far as the retros go. I think Nike did a really good job. I mean, they didn't get the check right. They didn't get the materials quite right. But the materials on these are really good. This era is not bad. My pair in particular does not have that overly tumbled leather that some of these have. You know, the quality control just wasn't there for these releases. Um, so some of them have really, really pebbled or tumbled toe boxes. Some people will get this um, heel cup with a lot of texture to it. Luckily, my pair doesn't have that. So I do wear these from time to time. Uh, I really need an OG pair, guys. Really, really bad. I really want a size 10 and a half or 11 too so I can wear them. I just don't want to pay the money. The last pair I saw went for $5,600. I think the retros these days sell for like 500, which is still obscene and insane. These sold for basically nothing for a while. Even after, right after release, even you know, when the resellers are hungry, they weren't selling for much. I mean, they barely went over retail for a long time. That being said, now that the Jordan market has exploded, so have these. All 
All right, next up we have a pair of Mars Yards. No, I'm just kidding, they're not Mars Yards. These are Nike Internationalists and they're from Nike ID. So what I did is I did a colorway that was really close to the Mars Yard, which is just too expensive to buy. And uh, then I did some red accents here and there. I dyed this brown, it really needs to be re-dyed. But, and then I swapped the laces. But other than that, this is just a regular Nike ID. I really like these because they throw off the Mars Yard vibes, but without that price tag. I think these were maybe 110, 120 bucks at the absolute most from Nike ID or Nike by you now, I should say. Uh, but what do you guys think? I mean, how'd I do on this? It's Mars Yard tribute, we'll call it. All right, next up we have a pair of AJKOs in the shadow colorway, and these are from 2015. Um, this pair in particular has been beat to death, and they really look good beat, I mean, in my opinion. So this should be vibrant, this should be gray instead of a, we'll call it a beigey color now. Um, I like that these have the correct branding on them. Some of them have the Jumpman, these do have the Nike the swoosh, which is what you want. Uh, I wear mine with the side, the, the wings flaps, just like this. So I uh, lace them behind there. I know that's not the most popular way to wear them, but guys, give me a break. It's just the way I like them. Um, other than that, I mean, it's pretty much your basic AJKO. So these don't sell for anything now, guys. This is the way to go, I'm telling you. With the Jordan market absolutely insane, it's not gonna be long before these really start to catch on, I'm telling you. And they look basically like a Jordan one, I mean, from a distance, we'll say. They just have lesser materials, but I don't think there's anything wrong with the canvas upper. And like I said, they really age well. I mean, take a look. Not bad, right? All right, next up we have an Hermes one of one Nike Air Force One. I'm just kidding, it's not by Hermes, but I did make it look like it's by Hermes. So what I did is I took um, an Hermes box and I matched the color. Then I added a ton of duller to make it look like it's just colored leather. I got some leather, um, basically just leather rope and cut some laces with it. Then I took an Hermes dust bag and I cut out the, uh, the logo basically around that, folded it over, put it on as a tongue tag, and then I finally capped it off by taking the ribbon that they put around the boxes at Hermes, cut it, and then um, I think I glued it actually to the back here. Don't tell everybody I glued it. But it looks like it's stitched on there because it has the stitching on the sides. Guys, these get a ton of attention by people that don't know that they're customs because they fool a lot of people into thinking that they're actually Hermes you know, shoes, that they did a collaboration with Nike. That would never happen. But if they did, I'd probably buy these. I mean, I like them. I think they look really dope. Um, Hermes is, in, you know, it's a really luxurious brand for those of you that don't know. That's who makes the Birkin bags. They cost, you know, 30,000 plus dollars. The belts are over a thousand bucks. Anything by this brand is outrageously expensive, but they're known for this color and they're known for their exquisite leather. I think, I think I did a good homage to them. What do you guys think? Let me know. All right, next up we have another Jordan 4 from 2019. And this is a retro of the cool gray. This is the first time that they retroed it. Um, they do not have Nike Air in the back, but it's okay because the OG didn't have it either. And um, these sell for a ton of money now. I don't know when this happened, but this is another pair that did not sell for a ton right after release. But since the Jordan market has kind of exploded, well, these have too. I think now they're over $500, which is, Mm, don't spend that on this shoe, I'm telling you. No matter how much you like it, the quality is just not worth 500 bucks, in my opinion. Could not recommend this. Please do not spend $500 on a cool gray four. All right, guys, next up we have a pair of 1988 Nike Air Revolutions, and these are the OGs. They, um, they're dead stock, but as you can see, the midsole still is crumbling away as Nike midsoles do. 
Other than that, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, I know before you guys ask, I'm not gonna soul swap these because I'm not gonna wear them. They're not my size even. I wanted an OG pair. Uh, these came up for like 80 bucks maybe one day at auction. You know I had to buy them for that. Um, they're really good quality, you know, as anything is gonna be from this year, but I really like the uh, Air Revolutions because they have all these key Jordan 3 details. So like we went through with the Air Assaults from the same year. This kind of has that same design cue to it. Really, really like these. And Nike Air in the back. How cool is that? All right, next up we have a pair of 1995 or 1994 Air Jordan Breads. And guys, this is the release to buy. I do love the OGs, but if you're gonna wear them, the comfort on these is gonna be so much better than the 85s. They still have really, really nice leather. Now they don't have the correct check, they don't have the correct shape, but they really, really look good. They just sell for an astronomical amount of money right now. I could not believe it when I looked online at what these things sell for. 5,000 plus dollars I saw in some, in some sizes. Guys, come on, who is buying this stuff? That is absolutely insane. But this pair has seen better days, but I absolutely love the way that the leather on these ages. On the 94 and 95s, they really get this like sheen to them. It's a good look, trust me. And um, you know, these this, this pair gets worn. I have a couple of these and probably gonna sell one of them because the prices are so high. We'll see. All right, guys, forgive me. I cannot remember if we've seen these before or not, but this is a pair of 1987 OG Air Max Obsidians. And guys, these came all the way from Kenya. That's right, Kenya. So as far as I know, some Nikes were sent to Kenya for relief in the 1980s. And they did this for a number of years. This is what I've been told. This is one of those pairs. So it came in really, really good condition, kind of for the age, meaning that it wasn't worn a whole lot. These are the OG soles on them. These soles are still firm enough that you could wear them. I mean, I wouldn't go running them or anything like that, but I've put these on to take a picture before. I walked 10 feet, so that, that means they're wearable, right? Uh, but honestly, guys, these are awesome. It's one of my favorite pairs of Air Max that I have. I absolutely love them. And we're gonna get into one more of the OGs. This material here on the OGs tends to really get disgusting over time. These are still really nice. And as you can see, nothing's really been done to them other than I did touch up the midsole here. Uh, those are the original air bubbles. I had some heat to them to make them um, clear again. But guys, dope, right? Look at this. How often do you get to see a 1987 Air Max with the original sole in that condition? Not often. All right, guys, thanks. If you like this, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.